This lesson is the most important part of the whole Django in production from Zero to Hero series. In this unit we will take care of G-Unicorn and Django part. Because it is crucial to understand, I will ignore Ansible roles for now. I will do all configurations manually so that it will be easier to understand. I want to briefly remind you that in production you don't run Django's built-in web server. Instead, run server command is replaced with a combination of nginx and gunicorn. nginx takes care of static and media content. If incoming request is neither related to static content nor to media files, nginx forwards it via port 8000 to gunicorn. gunicorn in its turn takes care of running Django application. gunicorn will run a systemd service. I will name the service lessons. Service unit takes care of launching a gunicorn process. When you launch a process, you need first of all to know the command to launch that process. Like gunicorn config something here and then the VSGI part. But besides command, the process must have a user associated, a working directory, a group and a set of and a set of environment variables. Working directory, user, group, command and environment variables are all configured in lessons.service. Gunicorn specific configuration like port to listen to like 8000 goes into separate file gunicorn configuration file. So we will need to create two files lessons.service where user group working directory environment variables and most importantly the gunicorn command are specified and second file is gunicorn configuration file where we'll configure the port gunicorn will listen to a good practice is to place all configuration files inside etc folder let's see all this theory in action so here i am on remote john system machine and I will create a systemd service now. Let's start with two most important uh, directives. The first one is working directory and the second one is exec start. Working directory is, yeah, well, working directory of our project. And it will be and inside this folder I will create a Python virtual environment where I will install gunicorn and basically the command to launch gunicorn will be full path to gunicorn up until here is our working directory this one will be Python virtual environment and this one will be gunicorn in our uh, Python virtual environment. Note that note that is very important to have absolute path here. And the last part of um, starting command is um, VSGI part. Uh, in systemd file you can directly define environment variables using directive environment variable. Right? But um, it is more convenient to place all the environment variables in a, into a separate file. And we'll place it again in this etc lessons directory. The, the most important environment variable which we'll define in this file will be, as you might guess, Django settings module. And the last one is PID. Let's define our PID file directly in our working directory. Now let's turn our attention to this configuration file. So first of all, I'll need to create this folder. Let's do that. So this is the main, the content of the gunicorn file. The most important part of the whole, of the whole file is this one, which basically instructs gunicorn to listen on the local host port 8000. This is our project that we are going to deploy. It is a Django project, a typical one. And what I want you to pay attention is this config folder where is vsgi.py uh, file, important one. And another important file is in this settings folder, base.py. So in this folder, in the repository, there is no production.py. Instead, 
production.py I'll create it on our VPS machine. I will import in production.py all settings which are found in this file, base.py. Let's do that. And here is a typical uh, production.py file. Pay attention to allowed hosts, which is uh, demo.dglt.net, uh, media and static root. Also, another thing to pay attention to is that some information like secret key and database uh, credentials, I store them in environment variables. If you remember, the absolute path to gunicorn is this one. This folder we already have it, and this is Python virtual environment, which we did not create it yet. Let's do that now. And now we have Unicorn in our virtual environment. At this moment, if I run manage migrate, it will fail. It will fail because first of all, manage command will not be able to find correct Django settings module. Another thing is that production.py reads some of its settings from environment variables. So I need to have those environment variables defined and I need them defined in this current shell. So what I did, I created a file env.sh here on my VPS and I placed it in root folder. This file. And I defined in it all sort of secret variables. I will add values to these variables behind the scene. It's a secret after all. Values for db user, db name, db path will be the same I used in previous lessons where I set up and configured database. After defining all those secrets values in env.sh, I will source this file so that I will have them defined in my current shell. So at this moment, if I check my current environment, I have those variables defined. As an example, I give you Django settings, but in a similar manner, in my current environment, I have secret key, db user, db password uh, defined in my current shell. So basically right now I'm prepared to run manage migrate. Let's do that. We are now sure that our application can connect to database and we just ran all our migrations. Let's focus now on static files. In production py file is defined static root variable. Because of this value, if I now run collect static, Django will gather all static files from all apps I use in my project and place all those files in this folder. A little bit later, we will adjust our nginx configuration file to serve static content from this location. So now we can see that Django moved all static files in this folder. If I check demo.dglt.net in my browser now, it will show 502 bad gateway error. At this moment, this is absolutely fine, because I did not start gunicorn yet. If I start gunicorn via lessons.service now, it will fail. It will fail because I did not yet define etc lessons gunicorn env file. I mean that this file we did not create it yet. This file is similar to env.sh I created in my project root. It contains environment variables. But gunicorn.env purpose is diff it's a little bit different. Its purpose is not to define environment variables for current shell. There is no such thing as current shell when running under systemd. 
its purpose is to define environment variables for this process. With other words, its purpose is to define environment variables for Django app. So let's do this change. And now let's start GUnicorn. Great, it's up and running. And now let's check it in the browser. We have our app running. Obvious problem here is that Nginx is not serving static content. Let's fix this. And voila, problem is fixed. Obviously, there is no content in this site yet. Admin user was not created and access via HTTP is not secured with TLS certificates. So there is still work to be done. But I can access main app now. I can access Django's admin, Wagtail's admin, and along with Django application, static content is served correctly as well. It is an important milestone. I will do two more lessons in Django production from Zero to Hero course. The next one will be how to automate with Ansible what we have done up until now. The last one will be about securing HTTP with Let's Encrypt. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thanks for watching.